Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will wait for a couple of minutes to allow the participants to sign in. Please bear with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a webinar series on financial management and regulatory compliances in times of COVID-19. I am Vinay, and I would be the moderator for today's session. With that, I would like to hand it over to our founder and managing partner, Mr. Ajay Sethi. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vinay, and good afternoon to all of you. I'm just bringing up one slide, which will take me up for just a minute. And there I am. Uh, these are very strange times. I mean, normally when we do webinar and seminars, we share knowledge and try to enhance businesses which are already doing well. Today's date, we are now doing webinars and knowledge sharing to understand tricks of business survival. Uh, it is important to understand these issues because the market is in a turmoil, recession is imminent, demands are falling everywhere. So one part of the business is how to survive the next six, eight months, and the other part is how to do, be successful or at least get back your ship on keel in the next uh, one year to two years. Uh, with that in perspective, I would like to welcome you to our webinar series on financial management and regulatory compliances in time of COVID-19. Today is the third of our four-part webinar series. We built this series solely around the concern of our clients. The first one dealt with building cash reserves given the imminent recession. Yesterday, we spoke about contractual arrangements and corporate law issues. Today, we look at the financial reporting challenges in times of COVID-19, where we will examine issues in preparing financial statements and their audits. Tomorrow, we plan to cover the impact on your tax planning given the very changed circumstances. You see this, it's all very connected, bringing our financial experience to come and play into this one. Uh, just a little bit about ASA and Associates and our speakers today. Uh, as you, many of you would know, we are a 30 year old accounting and consulting firm with a team of over 700 professionals spread across eight offices in India. We assist our clients in setting up their business, M&A, partner search, audit, risk advisory, taxation and compliance issues, 
be that accounting, payrolls, IFRS, and such. A major part of our focus is on foreign companies setting up and operating in India. Our clients do include many of Fortune 500 companies, besides the fact that we are, have a focused approach towards SMEs. I come to my speakers. That is Mr. Praveen Kumar and Mr. DK Giridharan. Praveen Kumar, our first speaker, is the National Head Assurance and has over 28 years of experience in accounting, advisory, and audits. He has been a member of various committees and think tanks, including National Advisory Committee on Accounting Standards and Accounting Standard Board. He's a regular contributor to multiple journals and magazine and has published a book on NDAS and IFRS. So you are in very safe hands as you listen to him. My second speaker is Mr. DK Giridharan, whom we call Giri. He's the practice head for Chennai, is well versed with US GAAP, IFRS, and Indian GAAP, applied ISA, and PCAOB standards. Besides signing off on some of our major audit clients, it is to Giri's credit for building the firm's audit manual and tools. As you can see, we have picked up some of the best speakers to come up and handle your key issues and queries. On the background, the moderator is Vene, who is a partner assurance uh, at the Bangalore office. I leave you in his safe hands. I wish you good learning today, and I, we would deeply welcome your feedback. Thank you, and over to you, Vinay. Thank you, sir. Before we begin, here are a few pointers for the webinar. Please note that all participants will be in listen-only mode throughout the webinar. If you have questions or comments, please put them in the question section in the chat. The presentation will be followed by Q&A. A link with the recording to this webinar will be emailed to you tomorrow afternoon. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Parveen Kumar. Thank you, Vinay. Please go to the next slide. So in this presentation, we will take you through a framework on accounting standard, a very brief overview and then impact of COVID-19 on financial statements. We will have an overview of key areas which are going to impact the financial statements. We will also have a look at impact of this in on CFO's life. And after that, we will take you through the impact of COVID on the life of auditors, their audit procedures, and the kind of reporting which we will do as auditors. As per framework of accounting, Indian accounting standards, which is similar to international financial reporting standards, the objectives of financial statement is to help user taking a decision. Now these users can be internal, for example, the management or the employees, or the users can be external, like the regulators, suppliers, bankers, etc. They will all need to know how the company has performed during the last year. For that purpose, a statement of profit and loss account is prepared. These users also want to understand the financial position of the company. For that purpose, a balance sheet is prepared. This is such an important statement such an important uh, uh, part of financial statement that all together the whole financial statements are called balance sheet by itself. The users also need to know, they also want to know how the financial position has changed during the past year. For that purpose, a cash flow statement is prepared. So these are the objectives which are defined in the framework of accounting standards in India. Basically, to help users taking a decision. Go to the next slide, please. This frame framework provides basic guidelines for standard preparers and also the guidelines for people who are preparing financial statements. This framework has defined qualitative characteristics of financial statements 
and it is very natural to have understanding very brief understanding of these before we go to the covid 19 impact as for the framework the financial statement should be understandable they should carry relevant information how the information is relevant basically go back if we go back to the objective this uh, these financial statements should help user to take a decision it is very much relevant for all, all the users to know the impact which covid 19 has on the financial statements or on the organization or its working or a survival just as we all know that franklin had recently stopped six schemes of debt funds another major uh, uh, shock is that virgin airlines has filed bankruptcy and today's newspaper also carry a news that british airlines is laying off huge number of staff so what happens to my investment if i have invested in this company what will happen to my job if i am working with this company what happens to my dues if i am uh, i am i have to recover some money from this company these are all questions which any users of financial statement would look into when he will read the financial statements these financial statements should also be reliable that is precisely the reason the auditors look at these financial statements carry out their procedures and give their opinion it is very important to have uh, all the people signing on the balance sheet to have uh, a comfort on the information which is provided in the financial statements it is not only the cfo and the directors who sign on the financial statements also the company secretaries and the auditors they put their signatures just to make it more reliable according to this framework the information which is provided in this financial statement should be comparable so as for the company law also any number which is given in financial statement should have the previous number previous year number as well so there has to be a comparability india follows a, a model which is a substance based accounting so all the financial statements are supposed to be made which is following substance over form uh, regulations so uh, prudence is one of the characteristics uh, please remember that income computation and disclosure standards icds they do not subscribe to this prudence characteristics but financial statements when they are prepared they need to follow the principle of prudence so that means if an expense has been booked in a year if all the other uh, uh, all the other points are clear then revenue should also be booked in the same year the financial statements should give complete picture they should be complete uh, so completeness is also uh, characteristics of these financial statements now we move on to have a look from a macro perspective how this covid 19 is going to impact the lives of people and the financial statements Could you go to the next slide please most difficult role in present circumstances is role of a cfo he is uh, answerable and walking the tight rope i was talking to a dear friend who is working in large oil and gas company he is working as a cfo and he was mentioning that things have become so difficult for him because on one side regulators are keeping a tight eye on uh, whatever activities uh, are whatever activities they are doing whatever financial reporting will happen there is a there is a, a very close review by the regulator on the other side there are board of, there are independent directors on the board so he is answerable for all the questions being put by them 
and on a different dimension, he is also trying to manage the auditors with remote working. So communication is a, has become a real challenge with the CFO. He has to not only communicate with the board, but with also with the regulators and also the auditors. CFO role is very important to understand the going concern, whether this company will survive this difficult time or not. Uh, Giri will throw some more light while doing the uh, while sharing thoughts on going concern from auditor's perspective. Financial results will come out and CFO needs to understand the ratios in much deeper manner. He needs to have a very close grip, complete grip on these ratios. He will be asked questions by, so there will be people who will be asking questions. There'll be investors, there will be tax regulators, there'll be board of directors, Everybody will ask how the ratios have gone and whether uh, it is actually the COVID impact or there is something else which is happening in the company. So CFO needs to have a very, con very tight grip on the ratios. He will also have to ensure that the internal financial controls, especially on financial reporting, they are, uh, uh, they are working well. There are various kind of risks which are coming out because of this situation. This situation is unprecedented. So there are operational disruptions. Labor is not available. Market is closed. The supply is not happening. So there are operational disruptions which are happening. Contractual non-compliances will be very normal thing in the coming quarters. Liquidity and working capital issues will be there on the head of CFO. In our previous sessions, which we had uh, uh, a couple of days ago, we discussed in detail about how uh, to manage the liquidity in such crisis, in such kind of times. So role of CFO will be to manage these risks, mitigate these risks, and ensure that working capital is there and at least uh, from cash flow perspective and from uh, financial reporting perspective, there should not be any challenge. We will also have to have a close watch on valuation of assets, whether tangible, whether non-tangible, and whether there is any trigger which is happening for impairment testing. We will go to the next slide, please. Now I touch upon some of the key areas which will uh, be impacted by this COVID-19 situation. These areas will have consideration on the financial reporting and accounting. And right now when we are sitting in the end of April, all the listed companies who have been given some extension by SEBI to uh, submit their final results and financial statements, and we are not sure whether on May 3rd uh, the lockdown will be over or it will be over in phased manner. What kind of uh, working will be allowed? What kind of movement will be allowed? There will be people in the red zone areas. So the, the bringing out the financial results will be a challenge uh, for all of us. But however, there are certain impacts on uh, these financial statements which we need to see. The first one and the most spoken about, most, most talked about is the impairment. So according to International Accounting Standard 36, uh, the core principle is that an asset must not be carried in financial statement at more than the amount to be recovered through sales. So that means in simple line, in simple words, if carrying amount of the asset exceeds the recoverable amount, asset is described as impaired. And there will be trigger points for that. So is there a situation in the company where a plant and machinery, uh, uh, it has, the value has gone down, whether a subsidiary company, whether there is a trigger for impairment testing in the one part of the business or one unit of the business, whether there is a trigger for impairment testing. So indication of impairment and testing of impairment uh, will be a 
key aspect in this year closing. The second point is on inventory. According to accounting standard uh, NDS2, inventory shall be measured at a lower of cost and net realizable value. Please remember the accounting standard talks about net realizable value and not the market value. So a lot of inventory is lying on the roads in the trucks. It, this has got stuck somewhere. There is inventory. If we talk about FMCG industry, there is inventory with smaller shelf life, which has a, a, a risk of getting spoiled. There is a risk of obsolescence of inventory. So in preparing or auditing the financial statements, inventory valuation will be a very big challenge which needs, to, which needs a careful attention. Revenue recognition. So on one side, the cash flow constraints will be there. On the other side, the revenue, which is uh, the most important item in your financial statement, will need a careful evaluation. This is one item through which people see the companies, uh, you know, how large is the company, the company with a revenue of this much, is a large company or it's a small company or, so this is one of the most important part. And when we look at global uh, reporting, global companies, uh, when we look at the data, we realize that the maximum number of uh, you know uh, misreporting happens in revenue itself so according to ifrs 15 which came few years ago and india had implemented in as 115 which gives you a, a direction on recognition measurement and presentation and disclosures of revenue there are there are various steps which needs to be uh, looked into five step up formula is to is uh, defined to recognize the revenue and we have to see that uh, you know whether a situation is actually demanding that revenue to be recognized or not to be recognized there can be issues around performance obligations there may be issues around uncertainty over collections there will be various situations which can impact the performance obligation and hence the revenue recognition. So one needs to be very careful in recognizing revenue in these kind of circumstances and also doing audit of uh, revenue recognition. Provisioning, another point which will have an impact during this year. It is possible that vendors uh, uh, may ask you to give more discounts there may be a situation that the dues which you need to have uh, which which are appearing as debtors uh, may have uh, you know recoverability issues so i was uh, having a brief chit chat with a large company uh, in steel they said that they are planning to uh, extend the payment period to uh, another uh, one month uh, so they are increasing the payment cycle this can happen to the debtors of the company for which you are preparing the financial statement and what happens if we are related to hotel industry or hospitality industry so let us say if your company is supplying to hotels various hotels and there is an outstanding appearing in your financial statements how to make a provision how much to make a provision from for them because they are all closed uh, liquidity is an issue there everyone who has to give money is trying to negotiate and there will be a negotiation on the pricing as well and if this company for which you are preparing or auditing the real uh, the, the financial statement if this company is in real estate sector so whether uh, you are having a lease income as major part of your revenue how you will uh, consider these situations uh, in in the in the real estate sector companies how will you manage if there is a force majeure situation in your company 
we had a discussion on force majeure yesterday and there were uh, lawyers talking about situations where force majeure can or cannot be implemented uh, cannot be used so the people who are preparing financial statements or doing audit they need to be careful in looking into these provisions they are going to have a significant impact on the financial reporting then we come to the contingent liabilities identification estimation and then uh, making a provision we have one has to be very very careful whether this liability is a probable probable liability and whether the estimate uh, uh, value can be derived or whether it is only estimable or it is uh, it's just a, a, a remote chance of uh, bringing it into life into the liability so one has to look into the past experience one has to look into industry practices and look into uh, you know other uh, um, you know what whatever uh, is uh, happening in the accounting circles on making provisions for contingent liability so this will also have an impact on financial reporting there will be certainly change in the lease terms and companies which are uh, uh, implementing india's 116 will have to reconsider their uh, discounting and will need to be careful about uh, lease accounting uh, some of the companies have already approached their landlords and they have been given some kind of discounts and one thing which i found is very common is that the landlords said that they will be uh, giving discounts through credit notes so they will be raising bill for the same amount but a credit note will come for the discounts which are happening so it is important to reflect correctly in the accounting uh, uh, books and the financial statement whatever impact is happening because of these discounts and your future estimates and cash flows will also get affected and also uh, employees benefit is one line item which will have uh, an impact of course uh, there are uh, salary cuts happening so there is a revision in the remuneration uh, so those will clearly be part of the financial statement but there are some hidden things so when you make provision for gratuity or uh, uh, leave in cashment so there are certain assumptions which are given to actuary actuaries those assumptions will have a significant impact attrition rate will not be same as it was last year rate of salary growth will not be same as it was given last year so while doing uh, accounting or while making a provision or while doing the audit of these provisions or estimates one need to be very very careful and because employee benefits uh, you know uh, this this line item is also a significant part of the statement of profit and loss account then events occurring after balance sheet dates uh, it is true that we will be preparing and we will be auditing the financial statements for the year uh, 1920 the year has ended 31st march and there are still events which are occurring so we need to take into account those events which are happening after the balance sheet date so international accounting standard number 10 it talks about these adjustable events non adjustable events and we need to also take into account the materiality aspect uh, before uh, you know making any provision or before making any adjustments so last but not the least the disclosures will be required which will be specific to uh, the covid 19 impact and we will have to have uh, you know understand the uh, uncertainty over and the estimation which have been uh, uh, used for preparing of these financial statements so once the financial statements are prepared then it goes to the auditor and the role of auditor becomes more difficult in these times because of all these situations which are coming so go to the next slide and i will hand it over to uh, my partner giri he will take you through this uh, situation uh, how the auditors need to be careful about this covid 19 accounting situation over to you mr giri Thank you. 
May I request uh, Vinay or Kim to uh, ask Manish to unmute Giri? Yeah, he <clears throat> looks like uh, he has uh, some technical issues there. Uh, he should be joining in a bit. In the meanwhile, I've got a couple of questions, uh, uh, Parveen, sir. Uh, maybe uh, something that uh, you could answer, we can save on some time while uh, Giri joins back the call. Uh, there's one question uh, from one of the audience. It says, it may not be practically possible to be part of the physical verification of inventories post-lockdown. How do we address this? And uh, can, we use, uh, can we use technology as uh, part of the verification process? Yes, this is one of the challenge which uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, hearing from everyone. Even uh, when I'm uh, with the Accounting Standard Board and we are part of the study group which is, uh, you know, looking at this issue. So basically, it is practically not possible to have a physical verification of inventory. Uh, though as auditors we are supposed to do physical verification before uh, reaching to our opinion however um, it is practically not possible to do a inventory physical verification so at this point of times there are uh, alternate procedures which uh, will be required so there are two dimensions one is from management perspective and the other is from auditors perspective from management perspective, uh, inventory can be taken from the books and whenever the time permits, whenever the operation starts, management can have a physical verification and reconcile uh, the, uh, the inventory at that, at that point of time. So that will give comfort to the board of director and the management that internal financial controls are working or, and, and they are in order. For auditors, it becomes a little more challenging because auditors have to give their opinion on the numbers which are appearing as of as of 31st March. So um, auditors will need to do a physical verification as and when the things uh, the lockdown is over or whenever it is uh, convenient for the client and the auditor. Once they have done the physical verification and then they will need to do rollback procedures. So through some alternate procedures like rollback and uh, then, um, you know, uh, take up the inventory on that date as per the books uh, and then um, uh, make adjustments related to sales purchase, which have been done. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, then give your opinion on uh, uh, on these financial statements. Okay, sure. Another question to you, sir. Uh, one of the audience uh, has raised this question. He says, uh, we are a foreign sub subsidiary company and we need to report our numbers to the parent company for consolidation purposes. In these times, <clears throat> uh, challenging the, I mean, meeting the timelines is a big challenge. So, how do we address both as an accountant as an auditor? <laughs> uh, the good part, uh, Vinay, is that uh, uh, the lockdown is happening in the in the other countries as well. So, uh, if uh, Indian company is a subsidiary of a foreign company, so the foreign company is also going through the same situation, and they are understanding that uh, uh, you know in this time of crisis it is not possible to uh, uh, complete the reporting however some companies are trying to do uh, um, you know reporting and uh, trying to ask their companies to do uh, 
to close the financial uh, reporting and send it to them as early as possible after the lockdown is over so okay. uh, so this this is a unprecedented situation here vinay what we are dealing with uh, and everyone across the globe they are understanding this situation there are uh, people of uh, you know our kind of people who are there uh, across the globe so they are all understanding the situation so it is fine i mean whatever is possible so if you are uh, asked by the head office to report whatever the situation is put those disclaimers in the audit report and send that okay except physical verification of inventory and except this and that we have done our work which is which was possible on remote and send yeah. the report to the head office which will suffice their purpose right okay so i hope that answers your question vinay right right yes sir absolutely yeah okay yeah so, so uh, i've just got a message from giri looks like uh, he is uh, he has a problem uh, he may not be able to connect some technical issue there so, so i'm requesting uh, you to take this forward sir. yeah i will yeah. continue the presentation go to the next slide uh, kim so the auditors will have uh, you know uh, first and most important thing is that auditors will need to change the report the the approach so earlier we as auditors used to have physical meetings we now will need to do audit through zoom through webex through skype earlier our teams used to go and do the field work while sitting at the client uh, location now the data will come over emails and we will need to have remote access on the uh, their erp systems so we will need to change our audit approach uh, in these circumstances basically to have a comfort to draw our uh, uh, to to have to bring out our opinion on these financial statements so we will probably need to change our audit plan we will make uh, we will need to make a revision in the audit plan so which will require a reassessment of various kind of risks so there are additional consideration like i mentioned that there are various accounting uh, uh, matters which have which i have discussed in previous slides so some of the companies may try to use uh, uh, this opportunity to clean up their balance sheets some of the companies may try to be aggressive in uh, reporting that okay let me show uh, the loss excess loss and next year i'll make profit everybody knows that this year is not good so let me be aggressive in my reporting somebody uh, some people may want to be conservative in so there are uh, there are uh, chances of uh, fraud risk for which the consideration in the audit plan and risk assessment so auditor needs to revise their audit plan by including these uh, additional consideration then uh, also auditor needs to be uh, very careful and check if there is a scope limitation and i am coming more from uh, internal audit point of view also in case uh, if in case you are doing internal audit of a company and uh, this quarter was supposed to be uh, you know a plant visit and report on uh, various activities or financial controls in the plant activities and you are not able to reach there you are not able to go there the plant is not working or even if it is working with uh, less capacity uh, the auditors are not able to go so you need to see there is a scope limitation and you need to put that into your report as statutory auditor in case there is a scope limitation or in case there is a there is a possibility of uh, not being able to carry out certain procedures and you are not able to draw comfort or you are not able to draw conclusion based on alternate procedures you will need to uh, put that into your report so the audit plan needs to be revised and keeping uh, uh, covid 19 situation in mind and a very very important part is to communicate uh these revisions of your audit plan to the management to the board of directors and to those charged with governance as our auditing standards require 
this kind of uh, uh, communication to go from the auditors to those charged with governance so not only the plan will the audit plan will undergo a revision but also communication of that will need to go to the people who are uh, at the management or at the board so uh, auditor will need to do a assessment of the going concern so he will look into the market he will look into the situation he will uh, uh, need to be aware of the kind of guidance which is coming from the institute not only in india but also across the globe various institute are coming up with their paper so uh, going concern issue is one of the most critical because if this basic assumption is uh, under question then uh, you will have a very different kind of situation you will uh, as auditor will may like to revisit uh, the materiality also uh, you may like to increase or you may like to uh, have a different uh, materiality for different line items and also the timelines you as auditor uh, will need to be careful to communicate uh, to the management and do not be over uh, uh, optimistic about the timelines so auditors uh, will have a very difficult time uh, uh, you know uh, while doing the audit in this uh, covid 19 situation however if is uh, if the documentation part and the communication part is uh, uh, sufficient he will be able to answer the regulators or anybody who ask a question at a later date how did you do the audit of uh, inventory how did you draw your comfort on revenue recognition how did you draw your comfort on employee benefit so uh, so whatever auditor is discussing they need to document that and the best way to document is if you are having a uh, you know this kind of zoom meeting or uh, skype meeting or uh, video chat with the board of directors please try to uh, request them and keep a recording of that else whatever your discussion is make a memo and then uh, uh, send it through email and ask them to confirm uh, the discussions have been recorded in a proper manner so these uh, documentation part will be very critical uh, go to the next slide please and please check if mr giri is uh, online uh, ladies and gentlemen mr giridharan is back on line uh, so we'll be taking this forward yeah yeah thank you uh, Manoj, can you just go to the previous slide? Certain things I'll touch on. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Parveen. Uh, good evening, everybody. Sorry, uh, there was some technology hiccup, uh, Wi Fi issue because of power cut. Excuse me. I think uh, I'll talk about uh, implication for Strat Auditor because of uh, uh, COVID 19. Uh, COVID 19 catastrophe is significant on the economy, and there from uh, the uh, implication on the financial statement is uh, going to show up uh, both in the um, accounts of uh, 1920 and going forward on a quarterly basis in uh, 2021 because of its uh, pervasiveness. And uh, the uh, accounting standard and auditing standards, uh, I feel, do not have uh, all the prescription, you know, to deal with uh, the uh, situation and uh, the implication so there may be some amendments which will be required or uh, to a certain extent the standards both accounting and auditing standards have to be uh, rewritten uh, for this i want to give a small example or go back to 2008 in the aftermath of the 2008 financial meltdown in the us majorly the iasb took nearly 10 years to bring this IFRS 9 accounting standard on financial instrument, or uh, we call in India, India is 109, which encompasses the uh, uh, prescription on uh, expected credit loss model, how to do hedge accounting, uh, the new uh, provisions for uh, fair valuation and related disclosures in IFRS 9 as a response. Also, India is India's 115 and IFRS 15 uh, was a response 
to the complex business arrangements which were entered into by companies, especially after the technology boom uh, from uh, 2005 onwards. With that, uh, you know, background, you know, we have another uh, uh, complexity which has uh, come in. And uh, post COVID, you know, some of the existing regulations will not possibly hold good. This ICA advisory is also only clarifying or taking our attention uh, to our existing provisions in uh, the Indian uh, Accounting and Audit Auditing Standard and IFRS as an alternator. I think uh, in terms of uh, uh, Mr. Parveen's uh, session, some of the risks and what can go wrong majorly from accounting have been touched upon by him. These are of interest to the auditor also. So in this slide, I will uh, uh, basically uh, mainly take up uh, risk assessment first under uh, audit plan revision. Companies could be symptomatic or asymptomatic to risk, which can be uh, general risk or COVID impacting on the business in particular. I think I want to touch upon or dwell in detail about risk assessment because that is only very key for uh, audit and majority of the work in auditing centers around the planning. And uh, I want to do this by giving uh, four or five examples of what is risk and then uh, go into a little detail about impairment. In terms of uh, risk, I think mainly the core is about uh, financial reporting and uh, uh, the major risk the companies will encounter is uh, around the impairment of non-current asset, that is fixed assets or PPE, we call it these days. Uh, the current assets, majorly the revenue uh, receivable, the account receivable, uh, which are uh, called the financial instruments these days. Then risk uh, about uh, the company ability to continue as a going concern. And uh, a lot of talk is about the post balance sheet events which are adjusting, non-adjusting and all. And for companies, because of their working from home, this uh, financial statement closing procedure uh, gains a lot of significance because in the last uh, uh, one month or so, companies are closing their books on a remote basis and uh, the uh, risk coming along with that should be addressed by the auditor. The other risks are uh, with relation to greater network need and uh, the cyber threats which uh, come along with that and also the working from home uh, related matters, which may be of uh, interest to the internal auditor because uh, there may be less collaboration because of this uh, new normal. There may not be much of adherence to company policies, the productivity low and all that stuff. Also, there may be new third party risks which may show up. Uh, further after the lockdown is lifted, the companies may be recovering mode and they will have workaround solutions. So auditors should apply the risk and control mindset to address uh, what can go wrong on those aspects. In times of crisis, you know, controls may be circumvented or controls may be slipped. So that is also a risk we should keep in mind. Further, internal auditor and stat auditor can help the board reassess the risk. And uh, mainly internal auditor uh, could also plan doing a stress test on operation risk and uh, related vulnerabilities. <clears throat> then uh, coming to impairment in particular, there are uh, three, four things uh, as auditors and accountants uh, we should keep in mind. One is uh, on testing and uh, second is on the method to be employed for testing. And then the challenges we may encounter in fair valuation, the consultations uh, we should go for and the periodicity of testing. Auditors and uh, companies have to assess if the business are testing positive for impairment and the testing kits to be used are the expected credit loss model, the fair value less cost to sell and the value in use assessments. Challenges are going to be there in uh, fair valuing because the risks are going to be known and there can be unknown risks also. And uh, the uh, uh, aspects we'll be grappling with in uh, this uh, CAPM model of valuation are uh, what risk premium to take, uh, what is the discount rate which has to be considered and uh, uh, how are we to predict 
the DCF in these uncertain times. And uh, because of these uh, challenges in fair value, uh, it is better uh, we have consultation with the expert and specialists, especially the M&A people. And uh, further, a very important thing to bear in mind is, like in the normal times, the uh, periodicity of impairment testing uh, should not be taken up on an annual basis. These have to be done on a quarterly because the triggering events could show up any time. And uh, staying with impairment, I also want to uh, talk about one important uh, new concept which is called expected credit loss model. The standard nowadays has become so stringent that it says that uh, we have to expect, uh, you know, the loss which will occur in future on the accounts receivable, and no more we can just uh, be uh, happy with uh, on the incurred basis. So now there is a distinction between what is an incurred loss model, which is there as per Indian GAAP, but as per India's and IFRS, this new expected credit loss model has come, and basically it uh, prescribes that the expected cash shortfall from day one of accounting the sales should be reviewed as regards credit impairment and the provision should happen. So basically, uh, as auditors or a company which is uh, preparing the accounts and uh, developing the uh, provision for doubtful debts should review the accounts receivable customer profile, the ledger, and uh, see where are all the red zones, what are the sectors which are uh, maximum impacted, like airlines, hospitality, entertainment, retail malls, and those which are affected by social distancing. If we have such a receivable balances, customer we are dealing with, they should be considered, and uh, COVID-related impact for losses should be uh, arrived at. Staying with ECL, IASB has uh, brought out an advisory uh, week or two back, and it mentions of uh, four important things. It says that uh, don't rush into uh, ECL conclusion, uh, do it on a moderation basis, because it says that uh, temporary liquidity bailout, which the governments are giving, is different from concluding that significant increase in credit risk has happened. Also, it says that uh, old assumptions will no longer hold good for ECL. You should factor in uh, new developments, current facts and circumstances should be looked into and uh, taken care. And uh, lastly, it says that uh, weigh the COVID you know, occurrences versus the government measures. So if there are uh, any payroll reimbursements given by you know, governments which is happening across geographies, those should be uh, taken into consideration uh, by the company to assess uh, cash shortfall or profitability, things like that. And then uh, one more aspect which I want to uh, touch here is on uh, Boeing concern. It's relevant uh, with uh, uh, many companies reporting bankruptcy. You know, we have to test the ability of the company to continue as a Boeing concern. And we have to check whether there are any material uncertainty, uncertainties or indicators. <clears throat> so uh, there are indicators for Boeing concern like uh, the ratios uh, could go or uh, the company's cash position may not be such that to meet its current liability. The company may be uh, making losses continuously. There may be a, a concentration of uh, customers who uh, may not be viable now. Uh, there could be a, a, a loss of raw material supplier which would disrupt company's activities and so, so many factors could be there which should be assessed and uh, any aspect affecting the uh, net worth or future profitability should be addressed. And it is also important that we as auditors uh, address this materiality, materiality to be revisited because uh, the times are such that the auditor should show higher uh, professional skepticism and uh, depending on uh, the materiality setting, which should be lower, you know, for risky balances. Uh, and uh, we need a more precision in our testing and uh, the comfort requirement is there. The sampling sizes 
may increase. So the factors about the, uh, the precision with which we want to test the increased samples which we want to take and uh, the kind of uh, balances we want to cover will all have to be judged and a call has to be taken by the auditor. And uh, for all these things, I think uh, appropriate uh, audit approach is uh, required. You know, we have to uh, uh, innovate, we have to think creatively about how assurance can be got digitally, uh, alternately from uh, traditional approaches. As auditors, we should be agile also in these times uh, for rapid changes. There may be a sudden client requirement for which we should uh, support. Remote audit is uh, uh, considered by ASA and we are able to cover them to a good extent. <clears throat> and uh, going forward also, audit uh, can be done in uh, two phases. One is uh, offline and uh, the other phase could be physically by going on site to cover the balance of the work. However, uh, challenges in terms of uh, availability of bandwidth uh, at the people's uh, workplaces or remote locations should be considered. And also the possibility of uh, remote working depends significantly on the client maturity level to supply scanned documentation, large files, and uh, uh, how mature they are to uh, uh, controls because if uh, the client maturity level uh, to risk and control is high, risk mitigation and control is high, then auditor can take a lot of comfort to control re control room and do a lot of analytical work and uh, test little in terms of detail, which is normally the laborious task, which require on-site work. And uh, uh, firms are now adopting uh, digital tools in terms of uh, Teams, Zoom, SharePoint, and uh, we are also attending Stockholm through remote mode, through video and camera. And uh, all of us have to appreciate that auditors are required to only participate in Stockholm. They are not required to go and physically count uh, everything under the sun. It is the client's responsibility. And as long as he's happy with the uh, uh, controls and systems in counting, that should be sufficient. And uh, one another thing which I want to touch here is on the scope limitation. Uh, given the uh, difficulties in getting evidence, it is important that uh, the auditor's scope is not uh, significantly limited. Uh, one very important thing in uh, the standard touching on evidence is that uh, he must have sufficient and appropriate audit evidence in his position. Audit will have to give special consideration to this and companies should be able to provide the uh, required significant audit evidences. Work from home, uh, digital and alternate procedures cannot dilute the accountability and truthfulness of audit opinion. That is very important. And uh, uh, from the client perspective also, they should uh, assist the auditor to overcome this scope limitation aspect because of the work from home and lockdown scenario. Next slide, please. The previous slide. Yeah. Coming to impact on audit procedures, I think the first and foremost is uh, inventory physical verification. All of us know that companies have to maintain uh, books of account on a continuous basis right through the year. So uh, the inventory records are also going to be there maintained uh, through the year. Uh, on which uh, the auditor can rely. Uh, however, inventory at uh, certain points of uh, time should be physically verified by the company as per auditing standard. It can be either at uh, year end or it can be at various points of time during the year on a perpetual basis or closer to year end. And if uh, the client is able to uh, substantiate uh, perpetual inventory verification, you know, that should be a uh, comfort for the auditor. Or, you know, if companies rely only on year-end verification, then they have to carry out the verification uh, when the lockdown is lifted and the auditor also could be invited. He must be there to see whether the system and the process of uh, physical verification is appropriate. 
and then uh, carry out a rollback procedure of uh, the inventory data. The second challenge which auditors normally face in these times is on obtaining confirmation of balances, be it uh, accounts receivable, payable, or uh, bar confirmations. <clears throat> The most important thing we should uh, bear in mind here is with regard to the authenticity of confirmation. So we can uh, do alternative procedures, you know, for these uh, accounts receivable confirmation, bank confirmation. Uh, basically, call the source of the confirmation giver and confirm that the uh, evidence is appropriate. I think we have spoken significantly on estimate in terms of uh, impairment and all that. On IFC, you know, basically uh, FSCP, financial student closing procedures should be uh, majorly taken care. Additional inquiries are important from the angle of uh, COVID. We have to make inquiries uh, how the COVID is implicating the financial statement. And in terms of uh, management representation, I think uh, we have to get specific representation where uh, limitation to auditor figures and we should ensure that is validated. Next, please. I think uh, uh, the essay standard on auditing talks about uh, the kind of a report we will be issuing, uh, you know, uh, majorly during these times in terms of uh, uncertainty, emphasis of matter uh, could uh, come into place. So when there is uh, uncertainty of uh, future, which is to be taken into account, this emphasis of matter should be figuring in the audit report. Second is uh, wherever there are uh, subsequent events, those should be uh, uh, brought to the attention of the reader of the financial statement for understanding. And uh, if there are a lot of judgments which are uh, to be grappled with by the auditor and uh, uh, by the client, uh, not only on listed company, the scam is uh, mandatory. The non-listed uh, companies also could optionally early adopt CAM and uh, the auditor's report could uh, discuss the difficulties in the CAM to give a better understanding to the user of the financial statements. Next, please. So these are the, some of the guidelines the auditors uh, should use. Obviously, the advisory, uh, the firm audit manual, and the firm software. I think uh, software also assists in uh, remote uh, auditing the uh, audit team and the manager need not sit next to each other and carry out review. If uh, the work paper are all in digital form, they can be shared through the software. And uh, these times bring out, uh, you know, very new practices and best practices. They should be also, you know, employed. I think uh, recently I was reading that uh, this work from home uh, has a lot of uh, advantages. Uh, it also helps uh, firms and companies to bring out the best talent, not only available in the city, they are present from all over the you know, nation. So there are many advantages in terms of uh, getting the talent, uh, bringing a lot of efficiencies, which will be for the mutual benefit of the company and the uh, client and uh, the auditor. Next, please. In summary, I think, uh, uh, these are the points we should uh, bear in mind as uh, takeaways. I think uh, the impacts are going to be uh, so different and unique that uh, individually we may not have the answers. So we have to consult, 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 consult uh, externally, consult internally, and arrive at a, a consensus uh, decision. Uh, the sufficient appropriate audit evidence also is important from the angle of uh, limitation uh, because of the times with due respect to accountants there is a possibility on the part of the accountants to reduce the prudence and to show a healthy position on the financial statement so auditors should be on guard by showing this professional skepticism confidentiality goes without saying because of the remote working uh, this aspect is uh, very critical because many of the companies which uh, you would be auditing will be uh, listed and uh, the uh, company personnel also will be at remote location and they should safeguard uh, the confidentiality. Last but not the least is uh, 
uh, we must ensure truthful uh, reporting and ensure that the auditor accountability for the opinion is not diluted. Thank you. Thanks for your time. I now uh, hand over to Vinay for the Q&A piece. Thanks, Kiri. Uh, we have got uh, some questions and uh, while you were trying to reconnect, uh, Parveen uh, did take a couple of questions and uh, since we are losing, I mean, we're almost uh, over time by, uh, we're always already at 5, 4.35. So I think we'll just take one question and the rest we will try and answer uh, individually. So one question to you is that, uh, considering the fact that most of the companies would have moved to work from home since mid-March, what would be the auditor's approach towards the testing of IT general controls and the controls with respect to financial statement closure process? Yeah, I think uh, financial statement closure process, I will take it up first. Uh, uh, I think as auditors and also as uh, uh, company people preparing the accounts, they should uh, take into consideration uh, the aspect about uh, uh, difficulty in collaborating and uh, discussing, brainstorming and coming at a judgment on some difficult aspect. That is uh, very critical, especially, you know, as we spoke about impairment, about uh, the provisioning and uh, uh, going line by line in the uh, uh, trial balance or in the accounts and uh, confirming that nothing up impacts each and every financial state line items. It will be easier if it is uh, done in the traditional way, but uh, now that uh, we are sitting, uh, on a work from home basis, uh, even now it's possible by way of file share and all that stuff. So FSCP is uh, very, very critical and it should be happening on time. And uh, in terms of uh, listed company, uh, you know, there are uh, aspects in the US called accelerated filers. You know, uh, the capital markets look at uh, uh, timely filing as a value. So it's very important that accounts are closed on time. Second on ITGC, Access control is very, very important. Uh, when uh, data is shared uh, across interfaces, it is important that the network is uh, safe. There should not be any open access and uh, 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 there should be password control. There should be user ID. Uh, companies must review uh, the logs which are coming out of the system in terms of uh, who are all accessing and taking out data. Uh, and uh, any exceptions should be reviewed by the company and data integrity should be protected in a, a big way. Yeah, thank you, Giri, for uh, answering that question. Thank you, Parveen and Giri, for such an insightful session. Both of you did address some of the critical aspects, the going concern, the disclosures, the risk assessment, and so on. It's a lot of work for each one of us. Well, I'd like to thank the audience for taking time and attending this webinar. I'm sure you found this useful. Whilst in today's session, we covered the accounting and auditing aspects, the tomorrow's session would cover the tax part of it. I request you all to attend the last leg of this webinar series. I would like to mention that the link to the recording of today's session would be sent to everyone tomorrow. We do have some questions which could not be taken up in our Q&A session today. Apologies for that. Uh, however, we will reply to each of those unanswered questions individually. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us. We shall be happy to address those. Thank you all once again. Have a great evening ahead. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.